Hi guys, in today's video we're going to take a look at what is atom economy, a worked example, the importance of atom economy, different types of reactions, exam style questions and finally a summary. Well atom economy is the mass of the product that we want as a percentage of the mass of all the products we make. The calculation we use for atom economy is that the atom economy is equal to the mass of the desired product divided by the mass of all products times by 100% and we use molar masses to calculate the atom economy of a particular reaction given its equation. Importantly, the mass of all the products is equal to the mass of all the reactants and that's because, as we discussed in a previous video, the atoms in our reactants are rearranged to form our products. So let's have a look at a worked example so we can have a greater understanding of the idea of atom economy. This question is asking us what is the atom economy for the production of CH2Cl2 dichloromethane for the following reaction. We can see chlorine and methane are combining to form our product, dichloromethane and HCl. Now you can see that the product that we want, our desired product, is here our dichloromethane, but the total products include HCl. So in order to work out the atom economy, the first step we're going to take is to write down the equation for atom economy, that it's the mass of the desired product divided by the mass of all the products multiplied by 100. In this case, our desired product is our dichloromethane, so we can work out the molar mass of our dichloromethane, so that's CH2Cl2. If we look at our periodic table, we can see that hydrogen has a molar mass of 1, carbon 12, and chlorine 35.5. That will give our dichloromethane a molar mass of 12 plus 2 times 1 plus 35.5 times 2, a total of 85. Now we need to work out the molar mass of our HCl. So the molar mass of our HCl, if we again have a look at our periodic table, Chlorine has a molar mass of 35.5 and hydrogen 1. So that's 1 plus 35.5 to give us 36.5. So we can see that the mass of all of our products will be that of dichloromethane added to that of HCl. So that's 85 plus 36.5 to give us. Now we can see in our reaction we are forming one mole of dichloromethane for every two moles of HCl. So we're going to have to multiply 36.5 by 2 to give us 73. So the total mass of our product will be 85 added to 73. That's accounting for the two moles of HCl and the one mole of dichloromethane. So that's 85 plus 73 to give us a total of 158. Now we can substitute this value back into our equation for atom economy. So the atom economy will be equal to the mass of our desired product, which we know is 85, so that's 85, divided by the mass of our total product, which is 158, as we calculated, multiplying through by 100 to give us a percentage, which is 53.8%. So let's have a look at the importance of our atom economy. Well, we know that our chemical reactions don't always produce one product. They can produce unwanted byproducts. These are what we call waste products. So improving the atom economy of a reaction can reduce this chemical waste. It can make these reactions more sustainable by minimizing the waste and maximizing the efficiency. Now on a small scale, this might not have a significant impact, but on a large industrial scale, Improving sustainability is incredibly important. So let's have a quick look at different types of reactions and their relevant atom economies. Now you might not have yet come across different types of reactions, but I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to two different types, our addition reactions and our substitution and elimination reactions. So our addition reactions have a 100% atom economy. There are no byproducts. You can see on the left in our reactants, we have one molecule of methane here and we're adding a molecule to it. It's adding across the double bond. It's opening that double bond and you can see we form one product. In our substitution and elimination reactions, the atom economy is less than 100%. You can see what's happening is our one reagent is forming more than one product. And if you only wanted one of those products, you can see how there'd be byproducts or waste involved. Ethanol is a valuable chemical. It can be made in a number of ways. 
One such way is through the fermentation of glucose, according to the equation below. We have glucose fermenting into ethanol and carbon dioxide. Calculate the atom economy of the above reaction. So the first thing that we're going to do is we should write down the equation that we're using, and that's that the atom economy is equal to the molar mass of our desired products, divided by the molar mass of all our products, multiplied by 100. So we know our desired product is this over here, our ethanol. So we can calculate the molar mass of our ethanol, C2H5OH. If we have a look at our periodic table, we can see that hydrogen has a molar mass of 1, carbon 12, and oxygen 15.99, which we're going to round to 16. So that will be 12 times 2 added to 1 times 6, because we have 5 plus 1, 6 hydrogens, plus 1 oxygen, so 16. It's going to give us a total molar mass of 46. We can work out the molar mass of our carbon dioxide as well, so the molar mass of our CO2. Again, looking at our periodic table, we can see carbon has a molar mass of 12 and oxygen 16. So that's going to be 12 plus 16 times 2 to give us a total molar mass of 44. Now, looking at our reaction equation, we can see that we're producing 2 moles of ethanol and 2 moles of carbon dioxide. So we're going to have to multiply both the values by 2. So that would be 46 times 2 plus 44 times 2 to give us a total of 180. So now we know the molar mass of all the products, we can work out the molar mass of our desired product. We're forming again 2 moles of ethanol, so that's going to be 46 multiplied by 2 to give us 92. So now we can substitute these values back into our initial equation. So that's the molar mass of the desired products, 92, divided by the molar mass of all the products, 180, multiplied by 100 to give us 51.1%. Let's have a look at the second part of this question. Another method used in the production of ethanol is the hydration of ethene, as shown in the reaction below. Compare the atom economy of this reaction to that of the reaction in part A. Which reaction is industrially preferable? We can see that in this reaction, where we're hydrating ethene, we produce only one product. We're producing that ethanol that we desire. There are no byproducts formed in this reaction, suggesting this reaction has an atom economy of 100%. So from this, we can suggest that it's actually this reaction that's more preferable. And this is because no waste products or byproducts are formed. So here we've compared the two. We've said that it's this reaction, the hydration, that is preferable because it doesn't produce any byproduct, unlike the reaction in A. You get two marks in this question. The first mark comes from identifying which reaction and the second for substantiating your answer. So let's take a look at the second question. Magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2, is used to treat indigestion. It is made using magnesium chloride, MgCl2, and sodium hydroxide, NaOH. There is one byproduct of this reaction which is the same as table salt. Write a balanced equation for the reaction taking place and calculate the atom economy of this reaction. So first let's write our balanced equation and then we'll calculate the atom economy. So we know that our reactants are magnesium chloride, MgCl2, and sodium hydroxide, NaOH. We know that our products are magnesium hydroxide, which is used to treat indigestion, MgOH2. We have one byproduct, table salt or sodium chloride. So here we have our reaction. Now we need to go ahead and balance it. If we take a look, we have two chlorines in our reactants and one in our products. So we can put a two in front of our sodium chloride. Then to balance those two sodiums, we need another two here. Going to check, we can see that that then balances out our equation. So now we need to calculate the molar mass of our product, magnesium hydroxide. Using a periodic table, we can calculate the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide using the masses of each of the components. Magnesium has a mass of 24.3, oxygen 16 and hydrogen 1. So using that information, we have magnesium 24.3, we have two oxygens, so that's 16 times 2, and two 
hydrogen, so that's 1 times 2, to give us a total of 58.3. We can calculate the molar mass of our sodium chloride using a periodic table again. We have our sodium with a mass of 23.0 and our chlorine with a mass of 35.5. So that's 23.0 plus 35.5 to give us 58.5. Now we can calculate the atom economy. So our intended product is our magnesium hydroxide. So that's 58.3 on the top divided by all the products. So we have magnesium hydroxide 58.3 and we have two lots of sodium chloride. So that's 58.5 times 2. We multiply that all by 100 to give us 33.3% atom economy. So this question holds four marks. The first for writing our balanced equation. The second for calculating the molar mass of our magnesium hydroxide. The third, sodium chloride. And the fourth for a correct equation for atom economy and a correct atom economy of 33.3%. Moving on to part B. A scientist reacts 10 grams of magnesium chloride with an excess of sodium hydroxide. What is the maximum mass of magnesium hydroxide he could make? So firstly, let's use our pyramid. This time that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. We want to calculate the number of moles of magnesium chloride that he uses. We know that the mass is 10 grams and we can calculate the molar mass of magnesium chloride. This we can do using our periodic table. We can see we have magnesium with a mass of 24.3 and chlorine with a mass of 35.5. Using that information, we have 24.3 for magnesium and two lots of 35.5 for the two atoms of chlorine we have. And this will give us 0.105 moles. So we have 0.105 moles of magnesium chloride that's reacting. If we take a look at our equation, we can see that the magnesium chloride and the magnesium hydroxide that are formed have a one-to-one -one ratio in this equation. So if we have a one-to-one -one ratio, if we have 0.105 moles of magnesium chloride reacting, we're going to form 0.105 moles of magnesium hydroxide. So now we know the number of moles of magnesium hydroxide and we know the molar mass from our previous question, or we could just as easily calculate it again. As shown here, we know it to be 58.3. Then we can calculate the mass, knowing that the mass is equal to the molar mass multiplied by the number of moles. So that would be 0.105 multiplied by 58.3 to give us 6.1 grams. This question holds three marks. The first for correctly calculating the number of moles of magnesium chloride. The second for identifying that one-to-one -one ratio and identifying the number of moles of magnesium hydroxide. And the third and final mark for correctly calculating the maximum mass of magnesium hydroxide the scientist could make. Moving on to the third and final part. We're told that the actual mass he obtains is five grams. What is the yield of the experiment? We're also asked that in this experiment, how does the atom economy relate to the yield? So let's start with the first part of the question. We're told the scientist obtains 5 grams. We know from our previous question the maximum that he could obtain was 6.1. So in order to calculate the yield, we'll do the actual yield over the theoretical yield. We'll multiply that by 100 to get it as a percentage. And we get 82.0%. So from our question, we can see that the yield is 82.0 but the atom economy was 33.3%. Now we know that the atom economy is separate from the yield. That's an important first thing to note. Secondly, we can then go on to comment that the atom economy of this experiment was low, but the yield was high. So this question holds three marks. The first for giving the correct yield, the second for explaining that atom economy is separate from the yield. The third for making a comment on the difference between the atom economy and the yield in this experiment. Specifically stating that the yield is high but the atom economy is low. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. 
Just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.